Hi and welcome to Leitrim Daily. My name is Brefney Early and you're listening to the What's On Guide here on the podcast. Today's show is brought to you in association with the Doc Arts Centre in Carrick and Shannon. Leitrim Centre for the Arts with theatre and music performances, exhibitions, projects, workshops and classes. But more on them later in the programme. Now, we've been all over the place for the last couple of weeks with the advent of the general election, which thankfully all finishes up today. I'm sure the candidates and the electorate alike will be quite happy to see the back of all the canvassing and posters and everything else associated with the elections. But we're about what we can do for fun over the next seven days around the county, and there is plenty of options for things happening around the county. We're going to be hearing about a wedding fair in the old rectory in Fina tomorrow afternoon. I'll also be joined by former Leitrim Person of the Year, Hubert McHugh, to talk about his work and the event Leitrim's Health is Wealth taking place in the Landmark Hotel on Wednesday evening in Carrick and Shannon. But this week has been a bit chaotic, as we said, because of the moratorium we had to put our current affairs show out on Thursday. It means that today we are doing our What's On Guide on a Saturday, which is a little bit strange. Some things are happening very, very shortly as we record this, and probably as you listen to it, hopefully you get it early enough. Aslan are in the landmark tonight. Uh, well worth a check if you're of a certain vintage, and I know I've seen them a number of times. They're an excellent band live, well worth going along to. They're in the Landmark Central tonight, Saturday, the 8th of February. In the Glen Centre in Manor Hamilton, we have The Dark Secret of the 1798, which is all about the 1798 Rebellion, and it's a, a film being played in the Glen Centre tonight at 8 pm. Check out those two events if you happen to get this show. In time Now, plenty of sport happening tomorrow afternoon as Leitrim travel to Longford for the third round of the uh, National Football League for that game in Pierce Park at 2pm tomorrow afternoon in Longford. A short enough journey for most Leitrim supporters uh, for what promises to be a pretty exciting game for the green and gold. The ladies are also in action. They host Antrim in Carrigallon at 1pm. It's going to be quite difficult to make both games. One will be finishing as the other starts but there's a bit of a gap, it's 40 minutes between them, so trying to get to the both is probably going to be a problem for most Leitrim football supporters. So it'd be a case of Carrie Gallen at one or Longford at two for most supporters. There's also a bit of soccer action. Manor Rangers hosting Athen Rye in the next round of the TP Brennan Connacht Cup. Uh, they've been on really, really well to get this far in what's proven to be a pretty decent season for Manor Rangers. They'll be hoping to overcome pretty b- stiff opposition in the shape of Galway side at and Rye tomorrow afternoon. That game also kicking off at 2pm in the B Park in Manor Hamilton. Now let's talk weddings for a moment because I know a lot of you will be freshly engaged or know somebody who's freshly engaged over the Christmas period. It's a it's a usual spot and a usual time to pop the question for most couples. Well, the old rectory country house in Fina want you to consider them as a venue for your special day. They're holding a wedding fair tomorrow afternoon out in the old rectory. And Julie Callan joins me to talk about it now. Now on Sunday afternoon in the quiet little village of Fina, it's going to be all bluster at the old rectory country house when you can come along at the wedding open day and have a look at a brand new facility that's been built at the house. Uh, Julie Callahan joins me now to talk about the house, the village and also this new opportunity for people to have their weddings in Fina. Julie, welcome to the programme. Thank you, Brefney. Tell us a bit about the open day first. Let's start with that before we have a little bit of a chat about the actual house itself. A wedding open day in Fina, it's not somewhere that people would immediately think of for a wedding, but you're going to change all that. Yeah, um, we started out, I suppose, uh, thinking about this maybe five years ago. My parents were 50 years married and um, we hosted their 50th wedding anniversary at our house. So we rented a marquee for the day and essentially we had a a mini wedding uh, for 70 people. And um, it started us thinking that maybe this is something we could do on an ongoing basis. Um, So um, this year we purchased our own marquee, having used rented ones for some small weddings already. Um, And it is in a beautiful location. It's 
view out the front is uh, Fina Lake and the view out the back is Fina Abbey. It's um, a little different um, to what most people would use maybe for a wedding. A lot of people are going into more alternative style weddings. So it's it's based towards couples who um, want a smaller wedding and uh, probably a little bit more alternative and family based. Um, and it's just, it's a stunning location to have your wedding. Let's talk about the house itself. It's been around a little while. Yes, it's been around since 1827. It's uh, the rectory. Which in FINA is a very short time. It is a very short time in FINA. There's a lot of history in FINA. It's, um, it has a lot of uh, archaeology about it as well. FINA is a very historical village. And uh, it's um, it's been there for, for close on 200 years now. Um, it's right beside the next door is the Church of Ireland, for which the rectory was built. And um, the rectory has been in the Kern family now for nearly 50 years now, in a give or take 50 years. And um, we've been living there for the last 26 years. And we've slowly renovated the entire house. And then we moved on to the um, courtyard and converted the courtyard buildings into self-catering apartments. It must be nice to see that kind of project evolve over decades. Yeah, and I think um, both my husband Patrick and I are... um, well, we love the place that we, we live in. I think you need to if you live in an old building. And it's it's great to see um, old buildings being used and having a purpose and um, gener- generating a way to survive because in, in a bit, the house is, is too big for, for us to, to live in just as ourselves. So, and, and this way we can live in it and um, make a living and... Um, keep it going for the next generations to come. You can become a little bit self-sufficient in Fina as well. Yes, indeed. So let's talk about the event again on, on Sunday. Who exactly are you targeting to come along? and What's actually going to be there on the day? Yeah, so um, we're targeting couples who've gotten engaged recently or in the not so recent. Um, and um, it's, an, it's an opportunity for them just to see the place, to when you're looking for a wedding venue you have to go and look at places and somewhere is going to stand out to you you're going to go there and that feeling is going to be there for you and you're going to make your decision so it's an opportunity for couples to come and have a look and see if it's the place for them and we'll have um, quite a lot of suppliers there as well so you can have a chat with them wanted to be a very interactive kind of a day where people can talk to the suppliers even if they don't intend using those particular suppliers to get ideas of what they might want. Um, Because I think when you start out, there's so many options out there. And the more you talk to people, the more it'll become clear to you what you really want for your day. Sounds like an absolutely fantastic opportunity to really see a different type of venue, maybe from one of the mill hotels. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. In terms of capacities, what kind of wedding are you talking about? Because I'm guessing you'd struggle to cater for two or three hundred people. Yeah, so we're our um, the marquee is uh, for 120 people, and we have accommodation at the house for 30. So sort of immediate family and the bridal party would be able to stay at the house, and then there are lots of other opportunities to, to stay at other really nice places in Fina and in the uh, local towns nearby. In terms of the suppliers who will be there on the day, can you give us some examples? So um, we'll have a photographer and videographer, and there'll be a stylist there for the for the marquee and the house if you want to avail of that also. Um, there will be um, a hairdresser and makeup artist. Um, uh, Mrs. Doyle's Vintage China will be there. Um, uh, there'll be Avril, who'll be in the house with her music. She does ch- church and sort of reception-style music. Um, the Cats Meow will be there as the band. I love uh, them. <laughs> yes. They're, now they're on the show. Yeah, they're great. Yeah, they're great fun. And, uh, yeah, so people get a chance to to, to have a look. And Gail from uh, Balnamore, the florist, will also be there too. So really, it's a one-stop shop. If someone wants to come in and, and pick from all the local suppliers, they'll be yeah. able to do that. and that's one of the things that we kind of... Um, we, as a business ourselves, we like to support local businesses, um, and that's part of our sort of our offering too, is to to look at the the option to, to to have a more sustainable kind of a wedding as opposed to bring in a lot of suppliers that are far afield that um, to support local. What can I do on a normal weekend or a normal day in the old rectory country house? Is it available for one-off couples or for people to come and book it? Yeah, so we do quite a lot of things in the old rectory country house. 
uh, some of the group type things we do are murder mysteries, quilting retreats and um, yoga retreats. But we also uh, rent out the self-catering on a week to week basis and we um, provide accommodation in the house as well. We have some beautiful rooms with views overlooking the lake and we have a hot tub too. A hot tub. Tell me more about the hot tub because <laughs> now you got my interest. Really got my interest. Yeah, the hot tub is um, out in the field, and uh, like the marquee, it has a view of Fina Abbey and um, and the lake. And Fina Abbey is lit up at night, so it's really nice to sit out in the hot tub and either look at the stars or. You know, a friend of mine in Mullingar has a hot tub in his backyard, and I when I saw it, I was like. That's the most ridiculous place to have a hot tub. But when I was actually in it, even it was lashing rain and it was just yeah, sublime. It's, it's beautiful. We have a gazebo over ours, so you won't get wet even if it's raining. <laughs> oh, that's, I don't know. I kind of like being out in the, in the absolute element. But anyway, um, so you also do events and, and a lot of what you do is factored around groups and, and people coming for specific events. Murder Mystery Weekends, tell yeah. me more about that. Murder Mystery Weekends are a group offering. So a lot of people come, like last weekend it was for a birthday, so people might have a, a special birthday that they're coming for. Or you'll have couples who once a year all get together and go away for a weekend. Or we have started doing uh, team building corporate events as well, so we'll have two or three of those already booked in this year. Or social clubs from work as well, um, booked to do Murder Mysteries as, a, as an activity. And in terms of where people can contact you, where are your, your socials, your website, all that sort of stuff? Yeah, so um, the old rectory, um, Ireland.com is our website. And uh, I think we're, our Facebook is the old rectory country house and uh, uh, Instagram is the old rectory Ireland. Excellent. So yeah. people can find you on any of those yes. no, relatively straightforward locations. Yeah. Julie, thank you so much for coming in. The very best luck on your event on Sunday, it's the 9th of February, this Sunday, from noon to 4 p.m. It's a wedding open day at the Old Rectory Country House in Fina, County Leitrim. Julie, thanks very much for dropping in. Thanks so much for happening. Now, I mentioned at the top of the programme that today's show is sponsored by the Dock Art Centre on St George's Terrace in Carrick and Shannon. It's situated in the Old Courthouse and it is Leitrim Centre for the Arts with theatrical and musical performances, exhibitions, projects, workshops and classes happening throughout the entire year there in the dock. It also, of course, houses the Jury Room Cafe and also the Leitrim Design House on the ground floor of the building. It offers the best of contemporary art, music, theatre in beautiful gallery spaces and a bespoke performance space that I know I have enjoyed some very, very good evenings in, and I'm sure you have too. It's well worth checking out. You can find out everything about The Dock on www.thedock.ie or simply by calling into the design house on the ground floor and asking for a brochure. Their phone number is 71 96 and you can find out everything you want from their website about their upcoming events, there's so much going on. There's something there for everybody, from yoga to music to drama. Just check it out. You will have a very enjoyable night out, regardless of your age or your interests. There is something in their program between now and April, May, when they kind of close up a little bit for the summer. So have a look at that and get yourself out and about at the dock in Carrick and Shannon. Thank you very much for your continued support of Leitrim Daily. It's greatly appreciated. And finally, taking a look down through the listings of the weekend, there's a final performance of St. Clair's Comprehensive's musical, Footloose the Musical, at 7.30 tomorrow evening. That's Sunday the 9th of February. And you can get your tickets in the post office or 87 I'd imagine tickets will be tight. It's the last performance and uh, it will be a great night and by all accounts the musical is absolutely fantastic in Manor Hamilton this year so well done to everybody involved in that. Now looking into the middle of the week and Wednesday evening sees the return for the fourth edition of Leitrim's Health is Wealth. It's a night put on by Hubert McHugh and Valerie Colgan, two mental health nurses or two should I say former mental health nurses in the county, uh, two very, very long established healthcare professionals and they put on a phenomenal night with some amazing speakers. 
Let's hear from Hubert about what's going to be in store for the 800 people expected to come along to hear about how important looking after your health and mental health is in our social communities. Now, next Wednesday evening in the Landmark Hotel, 12th of February at 7pm, is an event that holds a very special place in the heart of most Leitrim people over the last couple of years. It's Leitrim's Health is Wealth, and I'm joined by Hubert McHugh, who is one of the, the main promoters of this event. Hubert, welcome to the programme again. Thank you, Brefany, and thank you for having me on the programme. I better mention Valerie Cogan because I know she's been vital and it was her. She's the genesis of this idea. She's the genesis of this idea. She thought about it back in 2017 when I was Leitrim Person of the Year. And my aim was to, you know, promote uh, volunteering and getting people to talk to one another and leave down their phones, maybe on their social media for just maybe a half hour a day and to talk to uh, somebody close to them or a neighbour and maybe go out and do a little bit of volunteering and help somebody and you get great benefit from that. And Valerie said one day, why don't we do something to promote this? And this is how it all began. And I want to pay tribute to her for all the work she's put into this for the last four years. Now, we've spoken to you about this event on the programme once or twice before, but what's different now is that you're no longer a mental health nurse. You're now officially a retired... Well, (laughs) the 1st of March, my retirement is but I'm on holidays at the moment, so that's vaguely true as well. Uh, I spent 45 years out here in South Leitrim. I must say I loved every minute of it, and I want to thank all the wonderful families that made me so welcome into their homes and was always so courteous to me. And if I did any little small thing to help them, I can tell you they did much more for me and taught me so much about life and everything. So I want to say a big thank you to everybody in South Leitrim. If I ever was in their family or touched them somewhere along the line, a big thank you to them for their kindness and how courteous they were to me. Well, I know that there's an, any amount of families that will listen to this thinking, We know Hubert, and Hubert has done stuff that we can never talk about. That's true. But he has done phenomenal work behind the scenes in families and communities all over South Leitrim, as you mentioned. Thank you. Thank you. The the event itself, we have nine speakers plus an MC. Paul Williams, of course, needs no introduction. No. Proud Leitrim man himself. Balmore. Yeah, former Leitrim person of the year, crime correspondent, and. A great guy, he came and did it for his last year and everybody thought he was so good and he took such an interest in it himself. Uh, He offered to come and do it again this year and we're very thankful to him and we're delighted to have him. Now, let's go through some of the speakers on the night because I think there's something there for everybody, whether it's a religious bent or sporting interest or social issues or literature, politics. You cover the whole spectrum spectrum of Irish life Let's talk about some of the speakers. Let's maybe start at the... We start local and we go with Michael Harding, obviously. Yeah, Michael lives down in Arigna and uh, he's going to be terrific. Uh, He has suffered with depression, so he knows all about it. And his message will be to people, look, if you're suffering with depression, go out and get treatment, get therapy, and, you know, you'll get better. And he's an example of that. And he's a brilliant man. Uh, you see him on all the television shows and everything, and he adds a bit of crack to the whole thing as well, too. He's a great character, isn't he? He's a great character. And a fabulous writer as well. Absolutely. Who are you most excited about? Now, I'm go- you're going to say all of them, but who <laughs> yeah. of the eight that are on the list there that excites you the most? Uh, look at uh, Shane Carty. I met Shane Carty in Dublin for the first time, maybe when we launched and uh, he told us a fabulous story, well, a sad story in another way. Uh, He's only 24, but when he was 20, he was captain of the Dublin minor team, and he got man of the match when they won the Leinster title four years ago. But three days later, he ended up in St. Pat's Hospital in Dublin with terrible depression, and he was there for three months. But thankfully, his story is a very good one. He got, you know, he was well treated there, got the treatment, got back. He's uh, back in third level. He's back in the Dublin panel and fighting for a place on the present Dublin team. So he's a great role model for young people. 
this guy was so depressed, he got help, he got better. So the message is there, you know, it's okay not to feel okay and it's okay to look for help. It's election season at the moment and Nora Owen represents politics, I suppose, on the spectrum. Well, she does, but she's not coming to represent politics with us. I suppose she's coming to speak about Alzheimer's. And she had, uh, was on the show there with Brendan Grace and Sandy Kelly when they did it. Her husband suffers with uh, severe Alzheimer's. So it's one of the subjects we try and tackle different topics every year. And it's prevalent everywhere, unfortunately, Alzheimer's and dementia. So this year we decided to get somebody to speak about dementia. And in fairness to her, she agreed to come and speak about it. Now, the one that probably I'm, if I'm being honest, the most looking forward to is Catherine Corliss. She's done phenomenal work in in and around the whole uh, mother and baby home situation in Tume. How did you manage to get someone of her ilk to come down? <laughs> well, it, it's They're all of, of that ilk. Yeah, but yeah. She, uh, I was involved in all things with uh, a novena to St. Therese of Lisieux in Ballantore, Kilinumri Parish, where I come from. And we had her speak there about five or six years ago. So I went back to her, phoned her up and asked her would she come, and she was delighted to come. And I've been obviously in constant contact with her. And yes, there's huge interest in her. We're getting calls from all over the place. And she even called the other morning from Galway because people were asking her how could they come to this event? Did they need to book it? Did they need tickets? And again, I want to assure everybody it's a free event. You turn up, it's in the landmark, there's 800 seats down, so everybody's welcome. Do you expect to fill the landmark? 800 is an awful lot of people. It's, it's an awful lot of people, so we, we're hopeful. All the voluntary groups are coming in too, and they're having stands, and they'll have information. And, you know, we're asking everybody to come along. The speakers are brilliant. It's also our last night in Leitrim. I'm retiring, as you said. Valerie has moved to another position in Ballymote. So we want to say goodbye to the wonderful people of Leitrim as well. Now, there are four or five other speakers. You better mention them at least. Father Brian Darcy needs no introduction no, to most no, people in the very camp. Very popular. A lot of people asking about him as well, and he'll be big on the night. There's no doubt about that. Now, if I'm honest, I know very little about the other four names on the list. So you might just fl- run through quickly for us. Well, Valerie Sean Cox. Cain, of yep. course, is the famous Cain family, a brother of Dolores, fabulous in his own way in traditional music. Um... Valerie Cox worked in RTE, was a researcher on the Late Late Show. Now she's somebody running for office at the moment in Wicklow. And uh, she pushes the elder, you know, the people over 65 agenda. She's the volunteer person this year because she and her husband went out the time of the tsunami to volunteer. Unfortunately, her husband picked up a terrible virus out there and was critically ill for eight months and has only began to recover at the moment. So she's volunteering, but she's also pushing for the elderly people, you know, to, she had to retire at 65 and she felt she could continue an RTE and she was annoyed about this. So she's saying, you know, we shouldn't, if you become 65, that doesn't say that everything has to stop. Uh, Ed O'Mahony, Ed O'Mahony is a consultant psychiatrist uh, with ourselves. His speciality is eating disorders. So he'll be speaking about eating disorders. Uh, Jimmy Willis, Gemma is a lovely girl. She's 24. She's paraplegic. She's from Carlo. She was in a terrible traffic accident where she was driven through the front windscreen of the car. She was in the matter and the rehabilitation centre for eight months. But she's up and about again, even though she's wheelchair bound. She's talking about resilience. She goes around talking to the young people in the different universities and telling them, you know, that life hasn't to end when you end up in a wheelchair. Absolutely. Very important. As my own family have found out in the last few months now, my sister had a similar incident and has managed to progress past the wheelchair. But she's very... Yes. She's in the same yes. frame of mind, yes. and she's phenomenal. Um, in terms of the, the the night itself, it promises to be an absolutely phenomenal night, really reflective, really kind of personal night. And for anybody, whether you suffer with mental health issues or not, whether you think you suffer with mental health issues or not, there's probably something there for absolutely everybody in terms of their own mental health. Absolutely, and I want to just say something about Northwest Hospice. Valerie and I are the two 
hospice heroes this year and when we were leaving you know how people have little parties for you and things we said no to all that collect the money and on the night give it to Northwest Hospice and for the first time it's a free event to come into we're having a raffle on the night and we're giving the proceeds of that to the Northwest Hospice as well very generous and a very very good cause doing so much for so many people around the, the local area Hubert and Q as always you mentioned um you mentioned, was it Paul Williams, the former Leitrim Man yes. of the Year? You never mentioned you were a former Leitrim Man of no the Year well. yourself. <laughs> um, but so it's it's nice to ha- to have you in and the very, very best of luck. 7 p.m., the Lamarck Hotel, okay. next Wednesday night. And full details are available on your website? On our website, on the Leitrim Observer, Shannon Side Ocean FM, and the national media has taken to it as well. So, Fantastic. Enjoy the night. Thank you very much. And enjoy your retirement. Thank you. Now, Thursday the 13th is a busy day in County Leitrim. During the day from 2 to 7 p.m. in the Bush Hotel is a showcase event from Leitrim Development Company, normally based in Drumshambo. They work with companies and with people to develop themselves and to develop the enterprise within the county. And they're having a showcase on everything that's happening around the county on Thursday in the Bush Hotel, 2 to 7 p.m. You'll be able to find out, if you look to Google, you'll be able to find out the specific talks, the half-hour or hour-long sessions. But come in, drop in, have a feel for what's happening and take a look at the offers and the, and the supports and the services that are provided by Leitrim Development Company, right down to employment schemes, educational schemes, as well as grants and obviously the leader program run by Leitrim Development Company as well for investment in businesses around the county. Well worth checking out if you're self-employed, if you're out of work, or if you're considering maybe making that leap from unemployment or employment into self-employment in the county. Well worth making that connection and seeing what is out there for you in that circumstance. That is 2 to 7 p.m. in the Bush Hotel. Check out, as I said, the the local press and their website for specific details about the program of events on the day, those half-hour talks on very specific topics at different points during the day. The Dock also have Alina, I'm going to butcher this name, Alina Bezinski. Ah, I'm not, I apologise, Alina, but Alina and her jazz quartet, they're absolutely fabulous. She's a harpist and... She leads the quartet and it's going to be a great night. I know in the dock they're very excited about that particular night. And finally in the Glen Centre at 8pm on Thursday the 13th of February at Leonardo the Works. It's a 500 year celebration of Da Vinci's work. Well worth checking out if you're around North Leitrim on Thursday evening. Of course Friday is Valentine's Day. We'll leave that to next week but there is one event I want to flag with you taking place over the next couple of weeks and that is on the 19th Wednesday the 19th of February and it is get a good night's sleep or how to get a good night's sleep and it's led by Charlotte Mary Ray from 7 to 9 p.m in the hive in Carrick and Shannon and it's a night all about how you can find ways to de-stress yourself reduce anxiety and get that good night's sleep I know it's something I struggle with and I'm sure some of our listeners do too so if you're interested in that it's five euros a ticket you can get your tickets on the Leitrim Daily website Just go to our event page, click on the how to get a good night's sleep and purchase your tickets for that particular event today. Thank you very much to The Dock for their sponsorship of today's show. It's greatly appreciated and allows us to keep doing what we're doing. If you're interested in having your company sponsor a show or advertise with us, please do get in touch. Info at LeitrimDaily.com. Also, you can find us on all of the social medias. We're at Leitrim Daily across Instagram, Facebook, Twitter and YouTube and we'd love to hear from you and maybe we'll help you promote your business or your event over <clears throat> the next couple of weeks as well. Uh, I've been briefly early. This has been the What's On Guide on a very weird sun- Saturday evening uh, going out rather than our usual day of Thursday. We've no show tomorrow because of the election coverage but we will be back on Monday with a roundup of the sports coverage as well as a look at the elections next Saturday for those who are interested in that. The What's On Guide will be back in its regular slot of Thursday where we'll be looking at what's going on around the county uh, from the cinema to the dock and much, much more besides. Once again, thank you very much to today's sponsor, the Dock Arts Centre in Carrick and Shannon. I'll be back with you on Monday. Talk to you then.